long-winded, running through this life like it was mine. Never settling, but setting every goal high. 1,000 burpees on the path to my own destruction or success. But what is a mistake without the lesson? See, the best teacher in life is your own experience. None of us know who we are until we fail. They say every man is defined by his reaction to any given situation. Well, who would you want to define you? Someone else or yourself? Whatever you do, homie, give your heart to me and stay strong. Stay strong. With me and you know it, Yeah. Love. A lot of niggas fail, but I won't. A lot of niggas fold, but I cope. A lot of niggas gone, but I'm home. A lot of niggas off, but I'm off. A lot of niggas lost on this road. A couple niggas gave up, they go. Gang of niggas traded, they sold. But me, I'm standing on ten toes. Looking out my bands window. Wonder where my friends all go. Scared to get my heart to this girl, paranoid, she gon' leave it. Be here all my life on radio station 60. Will, she been lying for 60 years, man. You still lying? Well, what weird blew you in? Uh, you still lying? You now they got hood. you on camera. All right, man. On candy camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 the Marathon Clothing is, you know, the flagship brand, and it really just came from the parking lot, Crenshaw Slauson. Shit. All as I can remember, man, like, this just always everything you need right here. Shit, clothes, sweaters, nigga, the people, music. Like, it wasn't none of this right here. This was, this shopping center wasn't even really used. Everybody was really going where the Rouse is, all the way on the other side. Man, to, so, to yeah, man, we finna walk over here where it used to be Sloss and Tees before the Marathon clothing, you know what I'm saying? Before TMC, Marathon, all that shit came out, it was Sloss and Tees right here where the tax shop is at. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get him up out of here soon though. Don't even trip, we're gonna get that back. Yeah, Sloss Hustle. Look, post it on the corner till the sun come up. If we don't recognize your car, that's when the guns come up. Look, police hit the block, niggas scatter like roaches. Dope sales made in the open, me smoking. I'm so high, still a nigga so focused. Honey, exactly. this is the launch pad though, right here. Nigga live from touch the floor from this motherfucking yeah. launch right here. I would. Oh, and man. That stop. Like 10 years ago, I used to be a smoker, bro. I used to be sitting right here, chopping up rocks, smoking. Three and four in the morning, man. This man right here, Slauson T's was right there. It's my boy right here. He never turned me down, nothing. He always looked out for me, man. Now they doing a lot of big things now. But it all goes back to the people that love you around here. You go to all the rehabs, the rehab wasn't nothing but a vacation to me. But to see them going, the marathon clothing, and see how they doing things. I remember when it was Sloss and Tease, man. I used to go over there and just want to clean up for this nigga, man. Do something for him, man. Like, hey, you give me money, like, hey, OG, you ain't got to do nothing. Just get off that, you know, now. To see this and be this today, to talk about this right here, this is like a fluke. I come up here, they here, they still here, bro. A long way, a long way. Man, it's about to go bigger than what it is now, man. Cause of the hearts these brothers got inside of them. When I first came here, one day I was coming back from the bank and um, as I was passing through the lot, there was a lot of youngsters just hanging around, hanging out. Well. They found out that I was carrying a load of bread on me, so they were thirsty and hungry. Lil Nip jumped in front of him and told him, hey, cuz, this is OG, you ain't finna put that move down. He actually saved my life, cuz one of those guys had a piece, you understand me, he had heat, and I didn't know it, see, and I could have lost my life. So I just want to tell you how real these brothers truly are. And yeah, once again, I just want to piggyback on what I said. I mean, it's a good thing when you can come from the streets, from the shoulders, from nothing, and make something of yourself. I remember before these guys came up, before Marathon, like I say, pushing the trunks out the back of the trunks and whatnot, and to what it is right now, it's been a struggle all up and down the line, you know, and, it, and, it's, and it's a blessing. It's a real beautiful thing to see to what it is now. I've known these guys since maybe 15 years plus, and I've seen it. You know, it's a beautiful thing to see God's plan unfold to what it is today. Oh, and the shit was just crazy, man. It wasn't no wall right here. Used to be able to walk from this parking lot straight into the gas station. 
So it was like a big ass block party for the rolling 60s. We loved it. Like, okay, we got our own hangout. It's prime time. The shawl was cracking. Low riders and shit. Bitches walking up and down this motherfucker. Shit was cool. You know what I'm saying? Minus all the gang banging and the bullshit, but shit was cool. Treacherous alley right here, you always gotta watch. Niggas used to come creep through the alleys, try to run around, pop shots, pop, pop, pop. But now it's cameras and shit everywhere, so niggas ain't got some smarts about they self. Or go catch 40 years, nigga, cancel Christmas. However you wanna do it. But one particular day, I was hanging out in front of this motherfucker, man, and I had a big blower hanging out my back pocket. You know what I'm saying? And one time, man, pulled up, and in my head, I'm like, damn. Here they go, man, they about to jump out right now. I'm like, man, I'm gonna wait till they jump out and then I'm gonna run. I ain't gonna run just yet. So they jumped out, now in my head, I'm like, damn, cuz, what you gonna do? Luckily, I had an all money in, all, no money out shirt. This was the first one I think that bro might have printed up, you know what I'm saying? And luckily, I had that motherfucker on that day. It said, all money in, no money out. So when the police jumped out, asked me what I'm doing, I'm like, man, I'm out here promoting music. It's all money in, no money out, man. We out here doing positive shit for the community, all that and all that. Bro, they did not search me one time. I had a big ass 357 hanging out my back pocket. All they had to do was say, turn around, bro, I was going to jail. Or I had to run through that alley, you know what I'm saying? But by the grace of God, man, you know, I didn't get searched, I didn't go to jail that day, you feel what I'm saying? So yeah. All right, the reason this lot is special to us, uh, we started in this parking lot we grew up around here. Uh, this Shell gas station behind us used to be owned by a black man. When we was younger, we used to catch the bus going to school there. And uh, we used to always want to own something. And uh, we used to walk this way going home across the street at this Louisiana fried chicken. Um, we used to hustle in that parking lot. Um, when I was running around trying to get money, I used to always drive by this lot. And uh, Nip, my brother used to always be in this parking lot. He used to be probably like uh, 15, 16 people in the lot. A lot of these buildings was abandoned. Um, and they used to be in the lot hustling. So this lot means a lot to me, means a lot to Nip. You know, niggas done stood tall in this lot and opened up businesses and fought and got shot at. Yeah, so we right here at Chris John Slauson. Um, Take a walk with me. I'm gonna just walk through the lot with you and talk real quick. Um, yeah, so you know, originally we had this location right here. Um, it was called Sloss and Tees. We didn't have these these two corners or this third space. We was operating out of this space right here. You know, my brother had you know caught a case, went down for a few years, so we ended up losing this space. Um, when he came home, you know, he did like uh, three years with 80 percent, and when he came home. You know, he had a little money stat saved up. I had a couple dollars when he, when he touched down. We put our bread together. And the first thing he said is, I want to get this spot again. You know, I want to get back where we was at. And at first, I'm like, man, you know, we got so much going on with the music. Do you, do you want to be right here? And he like, you know, it's important that we, you know, keep what we had going. And also, you know, execute what we, what we started, finish what we started. So he set up a table on this bus stop right here on Crenshaw and Slauson. And basically, he was selling T-shirts and socks on parole on a table. You know what I mean? Every day, you drive down Slauson, you'll see my brother in the middle of the street making his sales. The first, you know, bread he got, he grabbed the space. First, last in the security deposit. And, you know, from then, it been flipping every dollar. Out here, though, my nigga been in this parking lot for years. My nigga, you feel me? Before we had the shop and all that. Nigga used to be right here out the trunk, doing what we do, getting our little money, you know what I'm saying? Scraping up our little hands. And the shit took, to, you know what I'm saying, each next level. Now we got the shop going, we got the, the deal popping. I was just finna fire on Nip, man. Don't, don't even check, man. It's all good. Get the cameras off now. Hey, these underboss are fire on a loaf like myself, cuz. Hey, niggas in hell gonna have ice water with, 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 with balloons and um, umbrellas in their cups, nigga. Uh, why don't we Why don't we go inside the Come shop on, real quick? Let's, let's, let's check this out. This is the zero, homie. This the, this the parking lot that, you know what I'm saying, I first started selling my shit on my trunk and it wasn't no t-shirt store. It was a, um, 
quick and split before the massive burger. This was a clothing store, somebody else owned it. We was about 15, 14, I was in the parking lot doing up. So we were selling music, we were doing what all these young niggas do, trying to get money around here, grinding. Then we transitioned to music, we transitioned to hard music, and then, you know what I'm saying, built from that foundation. But then we came back and started the store. And this is actually the second store. We had one two doors down, the police raided. I went to jail, my brother went to jail. Y'all heard about it on the records, but we back out, so we still know and approve it. That's why I was smoking my stuff. <laughs> Picture me rolling. Tip of my chauffeur, niggas look jealous, you gotta control it, reaching my quota, mixing my soda, feeling connected to God, trying to get closer, stepping on roaches, me and my loasters, just trying to get over, try not to get swallowed by locusts, trying to stay focused, kind of like Moses, like somebody chose us, this weight on my shoulder, I feel these emotions, but still I keep going, I've been to a poet, I've been through the motions, I'm feeling heroic, but life is a dice game, and they dare you to blow it. You might get a stripe, man, but that ain't gonna pay for the strollers. It's never enough to keep solar. Tell her your daddy your soldier. She need you right now in this moment. Not dead on your back, but she roses. To me, I'm just carving a scotia. And fine tuning my approaches. Doubling back as an owner. The moment of truth is the bonus, call the promoters. Hey. Hey. I've been around for some years though. So when it first jumped off, when it first jumped off, man, the real definition of starting from the bottom, these niggas started from the curb, my nigga. We yeah, was on the curb, had tables out there, real hustling. Whatever you could hustle, they was hustling it. Man, niggas used to get up early in the morning, 6, 6.30. Used to go right down the street to Fats, pick him up. Used to post up right here, early in the morning, before the sun even come out. Be posted up right here in this parking lot. Getting it, every day. We had our table set up right here. Probably like three days in a row, police came, pulled up, took all our shit. We went back, read up. They pulled up again, took all our shit. The third time they put us in cuffs, put me in cuffs, put Fats in cuffs. Um, we like, man, what's going on, man? We trying to make some money, man. It was a black officer. We like, man, we all black, man. Shut the fuck up. That's what he's telling us. If y'all want to sell something right here, what y'all gonna have to do is do like the taxpaying citizens and go open up a store and, and lease it and pay rent and sell something out of the shop. Took all our shit, he uncuffed me, he didn't take us to jail and he left. We sitting down on this curb right here, me and my nigga Fats. Just like, fuck man, what do we do? Everything's gone. You know, we keep taking a loss. Look up, across the street. It's high speed tax service right now. That was the first loss in T's. Right when we look up across the street, it was a big ass four lease sign. That was it right there. That's what we had to do. That was God telling us that's what we need to do. We need to be in that lot. We need to pay some rent. Stop getting harassed by these police. That's the beginning of this shit. How many fights I done had in this parking lot, I can't count, man. How many, how many fights Fats had, my brother had, hey, we can't count. How many, you know, incidents with the police right here? Let me show you something. So, you know, if you look where Ant's standing right there, that's where my brother was standing, you know? And if you look where let me show you. Stand by right here. You know, this is where the police was busting from. And police is trained shooters. Police don't miss. And, you know, he, he busting like this in a full clip. And he didn't hit my brother at all. It's fucked up. Uh, that's Nipsey Carr, the Beamer. We've been through so many different tumultuous situations in the parking lot, but the purpose was for what's gonna happen on June 17th. I brought up that story just to let you know, like, you know, uh, you know, it was a higher purpose, I believe, for what we're doing over here. It wasn't to get in trouble with the police. It wasn't to be a menace to the area. It wasn't to, 
you know, continue a tradition of self-destruction. It was, it was to build. And so all the obstacles and everything we went through for being misjudged and misunderstood, um, you know, it didn't stop us. You know, it, did, it, wasn't, it wasn't a brick wall, it was a speed bump, you know? And it was, and I embraced it as, as, you know, the resistance, the gravity of trying to do something great. You know? we, all, we, we, we laugh and we joke, man. We say, you know, Nip, Nip actually needs a, um, a plaque Nip need to be recognized by the city, man, you know, because um, he's doing something that a lot of people cannot do, and that's rehabilitate the area, give felons jobs, and, you know, make, make him motherfuckers be productive and make, putting something there that works. It's providing jobs. There's a lot, of, a lot of corporations that can't even do this. You can't come and put something here that's, that's actually a working business that, um, it's taking people that's out of prison, you know, felons, whatever else you want to say, and, make, and having to be productive. Hey, my name is OG. Everybody in the hood know me as OG. When I first do came down here with dealing with my brothers on OG Marathon, this was an empty lot, you understand me? Wasn't nothing but nothing here, no money here, not a dime. These brothers have turned this place into a gold mine. That goes to show you what a black man can do when he got his mind straight. Now, I've been known Nipsey since he was a baby. I'm like part of the uh, ultra family with my brothers here in the hood. So I just want to let you all know, we need to give a shout out to a brother that's really doing something for the community. Can I get an amen? You no, know, so what, what I admire about Nipsey and Black Sam, they give these young gang members action at doing something else. And, uh, and Sam is teaching them a lot of stuff, teaching them how to be businessmen. So uh, as black men, we need to learn how to be businessmen or just as, as men in general, not just black men, just uh, human beings. We need to uh, get together and be as one, unity. So, so that's basically what we're doing around here. Most of us are childhood friends. We grew up together, all bang the same hoods. I've been gone for a while. Things to change, but shit's still wild. Youngsters right. to change the style. We used to smoke cactus and chucks. Everybody here is family, man. Been with us since day one. Krusty? That was my selling in Lancaster, man. Me and him was porters, man. Lancaster building two. Yeah. You know what we went through, you know? We got the old footage, man. Shit, shit gonna be on, be on there, man. Y'all gonna see fast with big t-shirts. You know? <laughs> this shit didn't change, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We growing. Yeah. Still, st still going, man. It's a marathon, man. You know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These two right here, man. Good brothers. Yeah. Nip, you know? Foundation. Uh, yeah. This where it's at, man. This where we at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, just us being young dudes, probably like 13, 14, um, that was our, one of our areas we would hustle at, you know what I'm saying? And we would just wake up every day, we would meet up. The Shell gas station was structured different at that time. Um, and you know, probably like six or seven of us, we would meet up and sell our little tree, you know what I mean? Make our little swerves every morning. And um, became our hangout, you know, and then it also became like a, a you know, uh, a center, like girls from like Culver City, from West LA and all that to pull up, come get their little weed and whatnot. It was CDs, DVDs, bootlegs, whatnot, a tree, uh, a couple other things people would tap in for. But basically just being young, hustling, that was our, our area that we control. Puppy low. What it do? Homies out here on big rims, name ranch, shit, oh, Ashanti, yeah, you baby. know, three pieces, you know? Big money you know, in our pockets. Know, we really, man. we really rich roll, my nigga. You, know, we you got, feel me? We got, we got big rollies and, and big Come hunters, on, like man. you know. Dope, this before man. the deal, my nigga. We ain't did too much of nothing. We ain't sold one record, my nigga. You feel me? Average street nigga on Slauson, like ride like that, you know. After that, uh, he working hard over time. He had no sleep. So as a father, I was kind of worried. I've been telling him, you need to get your rest. But uh, one thing I keep remembering is saying, I'm not going to rest until uh, in this area, until I have three or four stores. So I said he has some kind Aye. of dream. Right song for my right dog, for my squad, for my track, heart. Man, my How we won? How we lost? How we came? How we saw? How we saw? Get it out the mud, man. Uh, new Marathon clothing store. Shit, we've been, this shit been in the works about four years. Um, long time waiting, you know. We've been paying rent on the empty store. You know, just to get this shit, you know, get this shit going. So that's how serious we really are with it. This shit just been sitting. We know this is how we grind. We just, you know. Sloss and Tees, 
go to jail the day Nip is in New York signing this deal to Sony. Fast forward, get out, nothing, lost everything, lost the shop, cross the street hustling. We end up getting a new shop, you know, Crenshaw come out, it's big, we doing moving forward, it's come to remodel and get this new shop that we in right here. We getting the crown molding, we getting the hardwood floors, I got my crew coming in, everything's looking good. Police raid this motherfucker again. I go to jail, I sit in jail for about 11 months. The whole time, with thinking, are we gonna lose this shop? The first time I went to jail, we lost the shop. By the grace of God, man, the team kept the shop, get out, and now we finishing this shit about to open up, man. So it's truly been a blessing. It's been a long time coming. And uh, it's the true definition of marathon, man. Ups and downs, the long haul, it's been for this right here. All right, yeah, and uh, Sam, he, he hit me about the remodel. Um, so told us that uh, he had a, I think it used to be like a, a, another little store or something. So told us about his vision, what he wanted to do with trying to have the, take the old t-shirt shop to the new t-shirt shop for something that you see on Rodeo Drive or something where you come in, everything clean, everything nice. Uh, so we come through, I gave my ideas, he shot his ideas, this is what he's trying to do. So he came through building walls, building partitions, um, came through crown mold, big crown molding, big baseboards, the little build out for the little, uh, uh, with the Crenshaw sign, just some more decorative stuff, some stuff that you would see in a high-end store where you come through and everybody's feel good about coming through and spending money. And so we was here, what, come at seven o'clock at night, working to two, three o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah, so uh, we was in the back hooking up the, uh, the new shop and uh, Sam came through, bought him some food and maybe like 15 minutes later, the police came through the back door trying to find out what we got going on. Like we back here working and he was like, all right, we're gonna have to have y'all come step outside while we finish our investigation. And we like, investigation? And uh, so we come step outside, we come outside and Sam and another gentleman here handcuffed. So he asked us all our questions, uh, get our IDs and all that, run our names and everything else. And then uh, after about 45 minutes, they ended up taking Sam, you know what I'm saying? And on his birthday, on, on, on his birthday, you know what I'm saying? They ended up taking him. We were back there working and Sam came in and out, came in and out, he did what he needed to do. Uh, he liked our work, he said, you guys are putting my vision together. So we said, okay, cool, perfect. Uh, we took a lunch break, all of a sudden we see three officers come in and say, hey, what are you guys doing here? And we look around and we say, uh, we're working. So they said, well, we need you to step outside while we do our investigation. And at the time, it was my first time with my wife coming to a work site. So she was here and it was her first time actually meeting Sam. So we come outside and the first thing Sam says is, hey, these guys have nothing to do with this. They're in the back working. As my partner said, he was extremely worried about what we were doing and make sure we were okay. And so over the years, obviously having a passion for music since day one, the dream and the vision was to, um, you know, start a label and start a, a music movement, a music brand. And then just thinking like, as a chess player, you know, assuming that we would have success in music, the next thing became, dang, what will we do next? And just looking at the blueprint that people like Jay and Puff laid, mm -hmm. we like wanna, you know, offer our opinion into fashion. Yeah. Floyd. All these jewels that I spit, fools that get chipped. I'm Archer One, I'm the designer for the Maricon Clothing. I've actually proudly been with the team for about a decade. Um, I mean, shit, through the ups and downs that you heard about, I've probably been in the back designing. Some of my most iconic designs are the astronaut for the Marathon Clothing and um, uh, the, the Spike Lee Bart that you've seen around a lot. But one of my most iconic pieces I've done is um, uh, one of the pieces that Nip used for the um, uh, Greatest Hits album cover, which would be the one of his face with all, all of the writing, which actually he made a list that I went off of and, to make that illustration, and it was a success. My name is Jorge Peniche. I'm the visual artist for All Money In, and my function within the Marathon Clothing is a designer. 
Uh, some of my contributions include the Armonia logo, the Marathon flag logo, the Marathon clothing flag logo to be specific, the Marathon clothing bar logo that you're familiar with from the Marathon music project, and uh, a couple other things. The conversation um, around the brand was still developing and the original uh, brand name was Grams and Gold Chains. You know, we were in the studio, in fact, you know, um, if I recall, it was, it was Sam, Fats, Adam, myself, Nipsey, and I, and we were really trying to wrap our, our brains around what would be an appropriate name for the brand. Uh, we bounced around a bunch of different ideas, and needless to say, Nipsey being the wordsmith that he is, you know, as a music artist, and let's be more specific and give credit to the MC, you know, as a rap artist, he saw TMC, the marathon continues, the marathon clothing. Yeah, so the actual brand, the name of the brand obviously is the marathon, and it just stands for endurance, it stands for staying down, it stands for like not quitting, accepting the ups and downs of whatever game you commit yourself to, and riding it out, you feel me? Because, you know, that's the reality of, uh, you know, success or greatness that it come with a roller coaster ride, you know? So I think that anybody could apply the marathon concept to what they do, if it's sports, if it's fashion, if it's music, um, if it's hustling, whatever, you just on a, you're on a marathon, you know? So to make that the basis of our, you know, fashion line, um, I look at it like, you know, we honor the people that ain't quit. We honor the people that stay down. The biggest, the biggest design, the biggest shirt that we have under the Marathon clothing is the Crenshaw shirt. Um, and there's a lot of history behind that. It's an iconic shirt. Um, it actually started with the Hustle in the House video. Copy, push to rob, tiny draw, dip and stone when he come home and baby we dog. And can't forget my big brother Black Sam, just a young good nigga with a million dollar plans. Blue and gold Crenshaw crew neck. And uh, all the homies Nip included had the, um, the, the, the crew neck on in the video. And um, it, it, it just hit, it was authentic. The video was, was, was a strong representation of what's going on. And everybody, um, right there was just attracted to that. And they wanted that Crenshaw sweater. Uh, I was actually in prison, you know. That shit hit me, hit me strong. I looked at the video and was, and was proud and was like, oh, this is serious. And everybody in there also, all races, everybody was like, man, that's huge. That was one of the, that was one of the defining moments in, um, I can say, I, I believe, in, in Nip career. And um, because of that, a lot of people were attracted to that Crenshaw. It became kind of like, to me, you know, on, on, from the outside, like our Brooklyn shirt, or our, you know, New York shirt. Like everybody wanted a Crenshaw shirt. Um, we've been fucking with you guys for about three years, right? Exactly. Three years. Uh, we did a Young and Reckless collab um, with the Marathon, and uh, I guess somehow you guys found out who we were. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been it's been good working with the marathon. The uh I mean, honestly, these guys pay better than most of the big companies we deal with. We're always chasing them for money and then Sam's just showing up here with bags of money. So, it's it's a way better situation. That's good. And and I occasionally get to have a little, you know, creative input. That's good. So, that makes me feel all right. Get to be helpful. I love more tense to cool, ain't no clarity in my will. That rolly bells will dance in that clarity in my will. That body get to dance and I carry it on my hill. I ain't gon' feel no pressure, don't care how these niggas feel. And so that was the vision, but you know, just the way that it, it, it progressed over just issues with the police, issues with just the area, issues with just uh, just the city of Los Angeles as a whole, and just the politics of, you know, tribalism and gang activity, and just what we went through from um, getting raided, getting the shop taken, my brother going to the pen, um, myself catching the case, us losing the space, my brother coming back home, setting up a table at the bus stop on Crenshaw and Slauson, um, selling uh, socks and t-shirts, taking the first 1500, getting one of the spaces, and then it turning into, you know, um, 
all of the actual spaces being rented out, everything being renovated. Uh, it's multiple employees. You know, it's actually a source of tourism at this point. All type of people from uh, Australia, Europe, Africa, all over the world is pulling up to the Crenshaw Slauson. Um, and it's not to buy drugs, it's not to do anything illegal, it's to actually tap into the story and, and support. And so, you know, it's important that the people understand what that process was. Where your money at? We gon' smoke a hundred sacks Shootin' up your block, switch cars, then we double back You a funny cat, you ain't made a hundred racks You ain't nothing like Nip Puzzle, that's a fucking fact Put no for my city, got a hundred stats I'm the realest nigga and it came from on that A lot of fake niggas hate me cause they wanna rap If they dumb enough to say it, I'ma fucking snap My name is Jade, I'm head of marketing promotions for the Marathon Clothing I'm also the creative director for the commercials and the photo shoots um, my job entails I have to find the locations, come up with the concepts, and I have to um, find the models. We try to use a lot of unknown models that aren't out yet. Look at my car. Look at my girl. Look like the star. Look at my life. Came up, nigga. We came so far. You see us. Crush off. Yes, off. Hey. You see us, nigga. My name is Chucky, and I'm the director of this documentary. When Sam approached me to do these commercials, he had a specific vision he wanted. He had an aesthetic picked out. He wanted to go for the old school, uh, classic Michael Jordan, iconic Kobe Bryant type commercials. And uh, so I took that and I put my own twist on it, my own style, and this is what we came up with. For this next video, the team wanted me to capture a luxury lifestyle, so this is what we got. So I think it's gonna be dope, man. I think that, you know, um, the people that been supporting us at the original location, um, you know, it's right next door, so we are not gonna lose any of that, but there also will be a upgraded experience for all those that been messing with us and then everybody that's new to us. You know, I think that we gonna set off a trend in the area of just, you know, offering a higher experience to the, to the area. Cause you know, we want nice things over here. We value nice things. We have resources to, you know, support nice things. And, you know, we also want things of value that represent us. So, you know, June 17th, you know, we really proud to open the door. This was like three, four years in the making. We went through a lot of stages with this and everybody put their blood, sweat and tears into it. So June 17th, Crenshaw Slauson, Marathon Store, flagship grand opening. Y'all come check us out. Never gonna love no broke ass bitch, whoa. Out of ground, out of bounds, 40 cal, 30 rounds. You make it from nothing, such a wonderful feeling. My clothes expensive, my hoes are pillow. Start to lose friends when they notice you winning. They see that we winning. Start to lose friends when they notice you winning. They see that we winning. Nah. Can't to get money, pat on my back as I did it. I pull up in four, blowing smoke through the cellar. You make it from nothing, such a wonderful feeling. My clothes expensive, my hoes are pillow. This next video here, I was in charge of editing. The video never came out. I ended up going to jail. We're going to go ahead and give it to you now. Better late than never. Marathon OG. Uh, Marathon continues. What? 
Yeah, I'm a runner. Yeah, I'm a runner. Hustle. You niggas see how long I'm gonna run the game, right? Yeah. I feel bad. I just started this shit. You sprinters. Like it's the beginning. Your legs getting tired. How I met the prize I came from letting dicky pockets, so I emphasize it. You check the file and niggas say I kept it silent. But fuck the rumors, money talks, and you make less deposits. I draw some video, you should go check the comments. They love me all around the world, my nigga, what's your problem? Turn off the lights, turn up my mic, roll up some flights, let's all get right. It's that shit you waited for your whole fucking life. It's that shit you waited for your whole Shows. Bring your home girl cause she coming toast Fast cars with them leather seats Drop top, she a fucking freak Blow me down while we ride on PCH I'm that plus of the great Middle fingers in your face uh. Turn off the lights Turn up my mic Roll up some flights Let's all get right It's that shit you waited for your whole fucking life It's that shit you waited for your whole fucking life I just came home My flow is sick, disinfect the microphone In 08, we told you we was never gone Change and we still on this marathon I'm a heavy hitter like Barry Bonds Lightweight set back for a heavy arm Now I'm jumping on stage with my jury froze Fresh out, spend the money, kill the movie roll It's all money in like a breeze truck And it's no money out like a prenup You need to get your green up Cause me and my team up Light up some flight Lace up my nights Victory lap Tonight is the night This is shit I waited for my whole fucking life This is shit I waited for my whole fucking life Stop, turn off the lights Turn up my mic Roll up some flight Let's all get right It's that shit you waited for your whole fucking life It's that shit you waited for your whole